What's up guys? Welcome back to Project Time Garage. For those of you who like to see the Spree content, today's your day. We're going to get back on the little 86 Honda Spree uh, that I scored from my, one of my family members for basically nothing. Um, I'll link a video to part one of that over here. Um, if you'll recall, we needed, uh, we needed spark. We got to the point where we hit a brick wall, we didn't have any spark. So I needed um, a pulse coil. I thought I needed a pulse coil. So um, I have a pulse coil. I have a pulse coil and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, if you saw last week's video, speaking of the tons of other stuff, that video I gave some project updates uh, when I did the door lock actuators on the F-250. Uh, I gave just project updates on where we stand with things. And, uh, and I showed a, uh, a humongous hoard of stuff that I bought from a guy when I went to look at uh, at this pulse coil or when I went to look at a few parts pulse coil and a few other things that I knew it needed <clears throat> ended up buying this dude's stash out if you haven't seen that video uh, go there uh, check it out it's the first part of the video the first part of the F-250 door lock actuator video from last week uh, I will link that um, so you can see the humongous hoard of stuff that I bought. It's, uh, <laughs> it's impressive. So anyway, uh, needless to say, I have plenty of parts, like a lot of parts, <laughs> and I'm ready to get back on this project. So my goal for today is um, really just get spark. So that's, that's the goal for this video, get the thing to spark. Um, I usually can't help myself if I have spark and I have compression. I'm pretty much always going to squeeze some gas down there and see if it'll at least make noise. So we'll probably do that too. Um, also, there are, there are a bunch of things about the bike back there on the back side that are problematic. Um, you know, the, the back wheels froze up. The Kickstarter was frozen. All those things that it really tells me I just need to pull the swing arm off the thing, engine and swing arm. Fix the bits that I know are broken, or at least cobble them together well enough to see if the thing runs or not. So that's my goal also, uh, kind of a sub goal, I guess. Uh, let's get the thing on the table. Let's get the swing arm slash engine off the thing. Let's fix the little junk that's broken or seized up or rusted up. And let's see if we can put a pulse coil on this thing, get some spark, and maybe make a little bit of noise. So anyway, let's get to it. So, object of the game is to replace this part, which goes down here under this flywheel. But the thing about it is this, I've got a lot of stuff wrong back here. Um, the back tire is seized, um, the starter is really bad looking. So here's what I'm thinking we do. I'm thinking, since it's so easy to do, Let's go ahead and pull the exhaust off of this thing, and let's just um, let's just go ahead and pull the the engine and, and rear swing arm assembly because it all pops off as one assembly, and it's so easy to do. That way, I, we can put the thing here on the bench, and we can work on it as a single broken down unit, fix all the stuff that that's wrong, free up this back wheel, um, and see what parts we need from our big parts stash that we just acquired. So before we get going too much, we're going to go ahead and give oh, the PB blaster is no longer blasting. Let's see if we can give these things. I probably should have had these things soaking for about a decade or more because I'm pretty sure that's going to break. Let's see. Let's go easy with it and then we'll go back tight again. Kind of work it back and forth. Yeah, there it comes. Awesome. Now yeah, that one came loose too. Excellent. I've run across a couple of these exhausts that are stopped up, that are plugged up. I don't know what they're plugged up with. It could be mud wasps slash dirt daubers or anything, but either way, I've run into a couple of them that didn't run very well because of it. All right, 
Let's see about getting an eight to get this guy here off. It sure comes apart nicely. I don't think I've broken any bolts yet on it. I may have to get more serious tools for these. I don't know. Yep, more serious tools indeed. Say that was in there. Thought I was gonna have to get out the half inch drive impact on that. Surely it should come out soon enough. Here we go. One exhaust. Let's go to the other side. Welcome to the other side. So most of the electrical connections are under here. I really like Honda's idea of just having bendy tabs to hold wires back. That was a remarkably good idea. I've been using it for years on all kinds of bikes and things I've worked on. And I rather enjoy them. Hey, look, that still has oil in it. Hey, look, that oil is now on my table. I'm actually surprised about that. Maybe we should drain it. Will it just, yes, it will. Look at that, it's amazing. Love it when a plan comes together. Get this drain, bring you back. All right, we're semi-drained. Let's go ahead and keep on unhooking stuff. So, the only thing that stands between us and a swing arm being pulled is a shock bolt up here and a swing arm bolt down here. So since I am by myself today and it's hard to hold the wrench on both sides, I'll do what I used to do when I was a kid. Take a pair of vice grips clip onto it then you can go around there and the, turn it and on the other side and the vice grips will bind up and hold it for you welcome to the other side again this is a 12 that should be all I have to take off from here is that one and then on the other side the shock. So let's go to the other side again. This is fun. So now I can get my vice grips out of the way. And I believe these are 14. Yes, indeed, 14. All right, that should be everything that we need, I believe, to take off in order to pull the swing arm assembly off this. Actually, no, that is incorrect. I have lied. The brake cable also has to come off. It's actually attached back here. It is. All right, and this thing, I believe, just pulls right out of here, doesn't it? So it's bound up in there. I wonder if I can just pull the swing arm and then worry about it afterward. Maybe either that or we're gonna have a huge mess on our hands. So, and this should be it. All except that brake cable. I'm gonna try and just lay it over. Yeah, that brake cable is just seized up in there. That's what it looks like. A little PB blaster. A little bit of light, 
Let's try these kind of vice grips, which historically have never clamped onto anything ever at all, period, and are just before being worthless. Hey, they're not worthless this time. There it comes. So easy, even I could do it. Yeah, see that was that was rusted up and bound up in there. That's what was going on. All right. Oh, I forgot some things, didn't I? All you guys that work on these sprees all the time are probably screaming at me. You did not hook the coil. Yeah, no. I know now. <laughs> I didn't know a minute ago. Phillips head. Hey, look, another drop of oil. That's never going to stop, is it? Say, that's pretty tasty in there. Come here, Mr. Coyle. I need you out and plugged up anyway. So I think it's at this point, I'm going to take the main part of the bike off the table and we'll just start working with this stuff. All right, here it is on the table. So this starter is trashed, probably never to be untrashed. And I think while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and take all this plastic louver and, and all this off so I can at least clean these fins out. Who knows what all's in there. Last thing we want is to overheat our little machine. I'm gonna leave this right here and I'm gonna put that back in there here in a minute. Where else do we have one? We have one right there. No problem. And then we have one back here. And I'm sure we have some more stuff, who knows what. I'm gonna have to pull that shock off there, huh? Don't see any way around it. Look, see this? It's so rusty, but the Bolts are nice and clean. Strange, huh? Most of the uh, stuff I take apart like this looks like it sat at the bottom of the ocean. Probably should stick a spark plug back in that hole. How many of you were screaming that at the screen? Put a spark plug in it. There we go. I'm not sure that's the right spark plug for it. Sure looks like it goes awful far down there. All right. Um, so, two, two things that need to happen here. For sure. First thing is going to be this impulse coil here, which is here, goes around and goes around the starter actually, and looks like that. A couple of eight millimeter. And I don't hold out a lot of hope for this. These things are pretty chewed up. Not that that's probably going to do much good. Let's use a manual wrench for a second. These things are so heavily corroded. Oh no, there we go that I was pretty sure they weren't going to come out. It, they're so bad that the heads of them are, um, are trashed.
Yeah, that one right there did exactly what I was afraid it was going to do. I don't know if I get that out or not. I think I have some drilling and tapping in my immediate future. I do. Yay, raw. I wonder if I can drive on a smaller one. Let's try this. I drove on a, um, a standard size that was a little too small. These bolts are pretty, um, nope, that's gonna give way too, isn't it? Yep, it gave way too. These bolts are pretty, um, pretty soft. You guys fell to the floor. ourselves to try one more time with the impact. I've got a pretty aggressive bit there. I think we do. I think we owe it to ourselves to try it once more. Believe it or not, it just turned. Well, that's good stuff. Yeah, I think I might be able to turn it out of there with a regular screwdriver now. Yep. Well, that's good news. Just that easy. <laughs> All right, I got a tool explosion going on here. Got to reorganize. All right. So I believe that was the source of my bad, that guy. So my microphone audio went away. What I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and pull this starter off because um, it looks like it's been at the bottom of an ocean. So we're going to get that out of there and get that replaced with the new one. Having to use a 5 sixteenths or on a on a swivel to get those out of there. Kind of tough to turn that every time I try to turn it, the whole thing wants to spin around on me. Okay, bolts out. Get the starter prod out of there. It was in there pretty good. All that aluminum dust and powder and Everything had gotten all seized up there. So what I'm going for now is I've got to pull um, that starter drive gear out of there. And uh, that's, I believe that's the kickstart. That's the kickstart gear I'm pulling off there now. We're going to reuse that belt for now also, just till we find out what's going on, if the thing's even a viable run candidate or not. So I'm going to take that thing off of there and just pull it apart and get it cleaned up and see if I can make it work again. 
All right, so I was able to get this thing freed up some, and it actually looks a lot better than it did, but it still sticks a little bit. So let's, let's pull this thing apart and see what it's made out of. Worst case scenario, we need to find another one. Looks like you can pull this down. It looks like it has just a little bitty, little bitty um, clip right there. This right here is out to get your fingers, fellas. I'm gonna take bets as to how far this thing flies across this garage. And here we go. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold that right there over it when it comes off. Just so it doesn't go zinging across the garage. That's what it was. Now we can disassemble this thing and see what all the fuss was about. I think a lot of it has to do with this main shaft right here. I think it's just gross. Thing one, thing two. Ooh, ooh. There's supposed to be a little rubber bandy thing in there holding those together. I bet that's disintegrated a long time ago. I think that's our major problem. So I'm gonna run over there and put it on the wheel. Try to clean up some of that pitting. Okay, not great. Definitely a lot better though. It definitely rides a lot better on here. So um, I think what I may do now is wash this thing out a little bit with some brake cleaner and um, grease it, put it back together and see what we've got. All right, so what do we do? We run it until it becomes a problem. to see if this thing's gonna even run or not before I do too much work to it. All right, so, um, hey, I just freed up the back wheel just like that. Who knew? That was easy. How much you wanna bet that clutch is junk? I should at least probably. I'm gonna go clean these surfaces up here where the, um, where the belt rides. All right, they cleaned up somewhat. Um, a little bit rough for my taste, but I'm sure it'll go through belts, but <laughs> it'll have good grip. That's for sure. He's got good compression. I suppose while I'm here, I should open up the clutch side of it. Just kind of see what I've got. What lurks beneath there. Sometimes you just have to use enough wrench. See? Well, those don't look bad at all. I think they're even, yeah, they're even still free. All of them are. Wow. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that at all. This stuff looks beautiful. I am not gonna touch that for sure. All right, nothing doing but to uh, actually start doing the work that we came here to do. 
that's here. What do you know? Pull it all the way through. Hey, look at that. I put it on exactly upside down. Don't be like me, kids. That's better. I guess I don't really care much about the air gap because there's no adjustment to it. So if they're not worried about it, I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> All right. Next would be the old flywheel. I don't like anything in there that I see. I need to clean that up. It's a lot better. I just took some sandpaper and just kind of went at it. Trying to get all the grit and stuff out of there. Because I don't want it all. It's magnetic in there, so every little piece of of dust or debris that's magnetic or that's metal ferrous ends up getting in there and will cause clearance issues uh, where's the key the key is there so let's go back on here and just kind of see what we're dealing with Am I crazy or is that thing actually making contact? It's not supposed to make contact. No, it's not making contact. Okay, good, good. You don't want it making contact. Contact is bad. All right, that's back together. Let's look at our starter. That goes up through there. That goes up through there. Starter goes on this way. I believe this one has the holdy downy thing. I believe I need a five sixteenths with a wobble. Oh, you can't see, can you? Let's get you adjusted here. Next would be this guy, but in order to put that on, I gotta take this back off. You know, this that I just put on there. <clears throat> and I know I know, I know, I know that I should not be using this because I know that I'm going to be back in here again messing with it. At least I'm going into it with my eyes wide open, right? Put a little dollop of grease right down there too. Since that is a mating surface. All right. We'll be kickstarting it, I would imagine, a lot anyway for now. I don't have a battery for it yet. I'm probably not going to buy a battery for it until I hear it run and see it move and all that. Just so you know, that will pinch you. 
Okay, it's the Finger Getter 3000. Spider. Go free, little buddy, go free. This is our side cover. The kickstand, or the, the um, Kickstarter was completely frozen in there. I did a little bit of massaging and got it mostly freed up. Let's stick a few of these back in it and we'll move on to the next phase. And by stick some of these in it, I actually mean we're going to put a few bolts back in it and then we're going to stop Um, the more bolts I put in it right now, the more I have to take out later when something is unhappy. So, nope, they're not. That is the majority of this part back together. I think we're probably just about to a point where we can stick this swing arm back on there and see what we've got as far as um, runnability goes, or, or at least spark. That's what we were missing before. We've came all this way for some spark. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the air compressor, blow all this stuff off of it, and we're going to put the fender and the, and the shroud back on it. So let me get the air compressor fired back up. Be back. All right, we're back. So I've got the swing arm back on it. I've got um, everything plugged up except the choke. I don't have a choke over here yet. The choke that was on this one is not the healthiest looking thing ever. So I, I got to in, maybe investigate it a little bit before I decide if I'm going to use it or not. Anyway, the whole purpose of this entire exercise to get to this point of this video was to try to make this thing have some spark. And then of course, to do that, we had to do about a zillion other little things. So I think we're to the point where we need to, uh, we need to see if the thing will spark or not. There's our coil. Let's put him back where he belongs. Right there, I guess. Nope. Is that right? That's how it goes. Uh, that's not even the right spark plug. That's definitely not the right spark plug. It's just the one I stuck in there earlier to cover up the, cover up the hole. Uh, let's see, I don't need to put it in, do I? Let's do this. Let's put it in here. That's the thing about a spark plug, isn't it? You can take one out and let it dangle and it will never ever touch metal, ever. It just won't do it. Okay, so nothing doing but to try it, right? Oh, I see spark. Oh gosh. Yep, I see spark. Okay, you wanna see spark? You should see spark too. Let's zoom you in. Right to there. We will stick the spark plug up in there in a place that is definitely not going to stay. See? It's like the spark plug people knew that you needed to do this and they weren't going to let you do it. No way, no how. There we go. All right, here. Spark plug. You can see that right there, right? Okay. Let's try it. Oh, that's good spark. Yep, over and over and over. 
it sparks. Okay, so, okay, do you think that we should end the video here now that we have spark and that was our objective? Or do you think we should dribble just a little bit of the good stuff down there, put the plug back in it, and see if we can at least hear it pop even though the header's not on it? Yeah, let's do that. If I can actually reach down in there. Okay. A little bit. Hand tight spark plug. What do you think? What are our chances? I see smoke. Or there's smoke. Guess what? <laughs> Did you see that? I saw that. It ran. Okay. Well, there you go. It runs. So that was my objective. And I think we more than met it. It, it sounds pretty healthy. I think it's going to be a good runner. Um, that's going to do it for this particular installment. Um, I think on the next video, I think our goal probably should be to get the thing driving and moving under its own power. Um, it's got a bunch of little things uh, frozen up. I've, the brake cables are all frozen. The front wheel is still frozen on it. Um, so we've got a bunch of little things to work out. But I'd like to get the thing to at least run, drive, and then see what else doesn't work. You know, does the speedometer work? Does the fuel gauge work? What lights work and don't work? To, we're basically, basically, we're going to work toward getting a little bike that completely works, everything's good on. Once we get to that point, then we're going to decide where we're going to take it from there. Are we going to do a full resto on this dude? Or am, am I going to pick one of the other 52 bikes out there and do a resto on those? I don't know. I uh, really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this, uh, hanging out in the shop today. It's a rainy, nasty, miserable day outside, so this was really a perfect thing to do. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would. Uh, it really helps me out. Um, if you have any comments, if you like this kind of content, if you hate this content, whatever, let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate it very much. Um, if you have any ideas for, for future videos, let me know. I'm all ears. Uh, so anyway, um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends. I'll see you next time.